Alright, so let's move on to the passwords module in OS Forensics. The passwords module is another very powerful tool in the OSF toolbox. You will notice there are six tabs in this module, each with a distinct purpose. Starting on the first tab titled Find Passwords and Keys, this quick 30 second scan can yield numerous browser passwords, usernames, and URLs, plus get all Wi Fi network passwords, some email passwords, even, and as well as some Windows user account passwords. Uh, Depending on the system, you may also get some Microsoft uh, Office or Microsoft Windows uh, software product keys as well. The results of this scan are generally determined by the particular system and how certain accounts and things were established and used by the user. Uh, the next tab over is the Windows Login Passwords tab, which retrieves some login passwords, any password hints stored in the SAM registry hive, and the NT user hash of the Windows user accounts. The next two tabs are the Generate Rainbow Tables tab and the Retrieve Passwords with Rainbow Table tab. These tabs allow the user to generate rainbow tables, which are a pre-computed table used for reversing cryptographic hash functions, and then using that generated rainbow table uh, in an attempt to crack sp specific hashes such as the NT or LM user hash. These types of password attacks are different from the brute force dictionary attacks that you can do in the next tab, which is the decryption and file password recovery tab. Here you're able to choose or add different dictionary files, similar to a word list, to try and brute force the password. We'll take a deeper look at this later on. And finally, the last tab is titled Install PFX Certificate. This function will allow you to install a PFX backup or recovery certificate that is associated with Windows EFS, EFS encrypted files uh, EFS standing for encrypted file service uh, from a disk image or another system. Here we see an example of the results of a browser passwords and keys scan. In addition to the passwords column, we also see other potentially valuable information such as login URLs, usernames, and the associated Windows user account. You will also see a column labeled blacklisted. This is simply referring to whether the user chose no when prompted by the browser to store a password. A yes in this column indicates the user chose not to have the browser store that particular password. This is why you won't traditionally see anything in the password column if it is a blacklisted password. When retrieving passwords from an offline Windows installation, so for instance not a live acquisition, it is recommended that you provide the password of the Windows user account that is being investigated should you have that information. To set the password, open the config window, select enter Windows user login, and type in the username and password of the Windows account that you wish to retrieve passwords from. In the Windows Login, Login Passwords tab, we will attempt to retrieve the LM and NT hashes from the Windows registry and save them to a file so that rainbow tables can be used to match the hash values to a password. In some cases, the password may be retrieved by OS Forensics without the use of rainbow tables. For example, where the password is the same as the username or it exists in the Common Passwords Dictionary. The NT hash value uses the MD4 or Message Digest 4 hashing algorithm. Keep in mind you will still see an NT hash value on an account where no password is required. This is simply because even though the value is empty, you're still able to hash a zero byte file. Here's an example of a zero byte file being hashed with the MD4 hashing algorithm. You will also notice this is the same hash value as an NT hash for a user account that
that does not have a password. In the Decryption and Password Recovery tab, you will be able to add a single or multiple encrypted files to the work queue. This feature allows you to decrypt files that use 40-bit encryption or run a dictionary-based attack on files using different encryption methods to recover the password. OS Forensics will display different options depending on the encryption method detected. Examples of encrypted file types you can attempt to decrypt in this module are Office files such as Word docs, Excel spreadsheets, and others plus files like PDFs, zips, and 7-zip files and more. You will also have the option of offloading the decryption task to the graphical, uh, or the GPU, uh, the graphics processing unit as shown in the screenshot above. This is advantageous for certain users who have a powerful graphics card as this operation can oftentimes utilize the GPU cores more efficiently than the CPU. If the password is found, it will be displayed here in the password slash key column. If you would like to add a larger or other customized dictionary to the attack list, simply press the Add Dictionary button to add the word list. You can add a pre-configured dictionary file with a .dic extension or simply add a txt word list file so long as it follows this format as shown here in this slide, which is one password per line. OS Forensics will then convert the txt file to a .dic and create another file, a .def file or definition file, which simply contains the name of the dictionary as it's displayed in the OS Forensics interface. The final tab in the Passwords module is the Install PFX Certificate tab. This function will allow you to install a PFX backup or recovery certificate that is associated with Windows EFS encrypted files from a disk image or another system. Use the browser button to select an exported PFX certificate. Enter the password if required for the certificate and then click the Install button. To view and delete installed certificates, use the Open Certificate Manager button to open the Cert Manager Windows program. EFS certificates are located in the Personal Certificates folder. To export a PFX certificate from a live system, click the Open Certificate Manager button. Next, locate the Certificates directory and highlight the Encrypting File System or EFS certificate. Go to All Task and then choose Export. Should you encounter EFS encryption during your examination, you will be able to load the decryption certificate you exported initially from the live system. This is just one of many important reasons for triaging or analyzing live systems out in the field before seizing them for traditional static analysis back in the lab.